This is a book review of Doom Patrol by John Byrne, the omnibus edition, John Byrne, Chris Claremont, Doug Hazelwood and Jerry Ordway. Now it's about 700 pages from DC Comics. Now again, one of the main criticisms always with, with DC omnibuses, the spine is terrible. I have to say already my copy has got problems where it's slightly torn away. I wish they would fix that, but however, this is an issue that they always seem to have. Uh, Marvel ones I find a lot better, personally. Together again for the first time. Now it's obviously Doom Patrol. First part of the book, very heavily, Justice League of America. So if you're expecting Doom Patrol, they're guest stars in the initial story you've got. But I do love the inclusion of these uh, just bits there with uh, pencil art. I love that sort of stuff. But Justice League of America, first story is about vampire and also the tenth circle. So uh, you've got Alfred, obviously Batman, you've got uh, Atom as well. Atom goes off on his you know, own separate adventure. Love the Atom character, always enjoy it. And the vampire is an evil character all the way through. Very unpleasant. There's no redeeming features. You can't say anything about him. He kills his own uh, disciples with uh, any, it's just awful. But there's a lot of references to uh, time. This, this goes the theme all the way through this omnibus. There's a lot of odd, but anyway, the vampire story. Once the vampire story is resolved, we go off into the story in Antarctica. I think the colouring, the inking of that story is brilliant. And it's quite a bit of this book is obviously that initial part with the vampire story. So you've got this, uh, get past all that, then to Antarctica. And you also you've got the characters Firstly, trying out all their various things. So you've got Grunt, you've got Nudge, and you've got Vortex. These are new characters that were introduced during the Justice League of America story. So those characters, and they play obviously later, we find out more about their past, and also that how that their storyline ends up causing problems for Justice, Justice League of America, as well as the Doom Patrol. So you've got this, absolutely some beautiful colour work, I think, in this. Absolutely stunning. This creature is an anti, but it also gives a great opportunity for Rita to really show her size, which is something I think that's always lacking in some of the books like Giant Man. Giant Man, I never felt was really big, whereas Rita, you really get the impression that she's enormous because she holds like a robot man in her, in her hand, sort of walks across the whole of the city, and also turns around and says, Oh, I've got to be very careful about all the buildings because you don't want the people. You don't want to step on. You never felt like that with the uh, comics in Marvel with the giant man. He always felt like he just wandered wherever he wanted. Anyway, got that story. That's a pretty gruesome story, that one, the underwater one. I love this one, the robot wars story. That was really good. Gives an opportunity also for the chief to, uh, obviously with robot man as well. That's really good. Now, this guy's pretty nasty as well. There's some nasty villains in this, I have to say. But The Robot War is a good, good story. Then on into sort of a, a time theme. Again, it's not time travel per se. It's just a time-related thing where you've got uh, you know, beautiful there, old uh, Rita being a gorilla. How abundant criticism of this book is that occasionally the storyline jumped back a bit. I always found that some pages seemed like being repeated. You know, you have a storyline and then suddenly something would happen and then the story would jump back. Oh, this is what happened about two minutes before. And then so, and I'm thinking, really? Did you really need to near enough repeat the story again? It was a bit confusing, personally. And you've got uh, other characters all uh, with, again, time-related. Metamorpho turns up as well. I love Metamorpho character. So that's some dramatic Metamorpho character, Freaks, as it's called there. And you learn a little bit more about Nudge and Vortex and all the other characters, and also Grunt. Grunt it was quite an interesting origin story for Grunt. Just... Superb. I think the artwork and panels construction is superb. But as I say, my criticism was the occasionally I felt that the story jumped back a few too many times in slightly confusing ways. You've got this great story with this guy where the chief, we find out his origin story of the chief. Now, not told in a bad way, actually. It's quite an interesting way. And then one of the characters that's a really good character is this Civil War character just turns up. 
suddenly out of the blue, you get the Civil War character. No particular explanation, etc., about the Civil War character. He's a ghost. But it does mean that it's quite useful in one of the storylines. Also, the next story. This is a, a time-related one again. Not particularly time travel, but time remembrance. Sort of like the X-Men story, the 142, 141, where it goes back in time. But it was a bit of a controversy in the sense that, because there's a bit of storyline with Rita that did cause a bit of an issue. I don't know why they included it. Not really needed. But it did, of course, for the plot, meant that it was useful because about how things change and all that sort of stuff. So that was good. I like the fact that you've got... Uh, Rita also takes some very unusual forms in this time story as well. And also you've got Justice League of America. We're not the Teen Titans, we're the Justice League. And you've got the uh, sort of Supergirl with dark hair. And again, weirdly, the story then suddenly changes and you've got the green, obviously, costume for uh, Elastigirl. Very unusual. However, then another story that's sort of time-related, not particularly time-related, but an energy vampire story where you've got people's uh, energies are sucked out of them. That actually sounds a bit similar to another story, I would say, of uh, Proteus comes to mind, of the X-Men. However, Nudge gets a really good storyline later, and it's quite a dramatic story. We fi find out about her origins as well, and about her, some of her... It's quite a powerful, powerful uh, character. However, it all ends, we learn about Vortex. I think a lot of this is all about the characters that have been introduced. So you've got Vortex and, again, energy vampires again, because you've got Paul Rita there looking worse for wear. And then that's all the way through to the end. I think it's just great. Just an absolute... However, I've said that's the end. It isn't the end, because you'll notice with that you've got a lovely section of white there all that this is weird actually the way it's been done in service no borders to it so you've got the pages so you've got there you see it goes straight up to the edge now that actually is sometimes can be a bit of a problem in terms of especially with the the, the gutter so you think that, i didn't really find that there was a lot of loss of story in the gutter but it does go straight to the gutter so you, the story goes all the way through However, that changes at next page. So I'm just going to get... What we do get is this, a separate, the further adventures of Doom Patrol. And you get sort of obviously the uh, who's who of uh, Doom Patrol. So you've got the Chief, Elastic Girl. I always call it Elastic Girl, but it's Elastic Girl. Doom Patrol. And then it's this is the Doom Patrol. That's why I thought Beast Boy was going to turn up. I thought Beast Boy would have been in the story. And you've got uh, Mento. I always call him Mentolo, but uh, um, I think that's another that's a character from uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, Mento. Oh, sounds like sweet. I think we've got sweets that are called Mentos. So, Negative Man, Madame the Rouge, and the Secret Origins of the Doom Patrol. Now, the story, the artwork is very good, but it's completely different from uh, the uh, thing. And, all, and also, the pat it's weird when you see the artwork. You've got this brilliant artwork by, and I loved it. John Burns, brilliant way he used the panels and the pages. Just beautiful. But then you've got these stories, and it's more conventional. And it seems really odd when you look back at the more conventional, after getting used to the style that he's gone through here, you go back to these stories, and they're like more conventionally done. And, and inked as well. And you've got Robot Man story. And also you've got then another one, Men of Steel. This is a Superman story. And you've got... Again, it's a sort of hmm, an unusual tale. Very unusual tale. Yeah, I, I couldn't really place that, that tale particularly well. Superman, Doom Patrol, in the heartland. you got Supergirl there. So uh, an, an unusual end, I think. This story is probably in many ways, obviously, for completist stake, uh, completist point, uh, quite useful. However, they just didn't really fit in with the first parts of the story. They were just sort of out of place, personally. Huh. Fine. Then, I think the best bit about this is the uh, bit here. Some of the extras. The extras are great. I love the bonus material. Along with the introduction, books always should have an introduction. Books also should have 
bonus material. And it's great that DC have included most DC ones, Omnibus, never include bonus material. So it's really nice that they've included it here. And not only that, you've got these lovely uh, uh, Patrol, uh, Doom Patrol cover sketches by John Byrne as well, which I think is just lovely, very loose sketches there. And also the pencil pages. Now, I love that more the merrier in terms of pencil pages, as far as I'm concerned. I just love pencil pages. And you've got quite a few pencil pages. It's nice to go back and look at the, plate, the end result as well. And uh, just beautiful. Absolutely. I love this one. I have to say, this was the story was all the way through thoroughly engaging, thoroughly enjoyable, brilliant artwork all the way through. John Byrne, yet another masterpiece from him as far as I'm concerned. I love his work. Loved his work from the X-Men. I loved his Doomsday Plus One and many up Fantastic Four, of course. And this is just superb. Loved this completely. Totally, totally recommended.